Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about homogeneous differential equations, and I'm going to give a rough explanation of why the method that is taught in a typical differential equations class actually works. This is something that's typically omitted uh, from a classroom discussion because it just takes a lot of time. So if you're interested, keep watching, and I'll do my best to explain uh, roughly why it works. So this is a differential equation. We have some function here of x and y times dx plus some function here of x and y times dy equal to zero. This is just a differential equation. And so before we can define uh, what it means for this equation to be homogeneous, we have to define what it means for a function to be homogeneous. So if you have a function, say f of x, y, okay, and then let's say that um, you look at f of lambda x, lambda y. If you plug in lambda uh, x for x and lambda y for y, if you make that substitution and you end up with lambda to the n f of x, y. So if this happens, um, then you say this function is homogeneous of degree n. So this function f is homogeneous of degree n. And again, this is a loose discussion, so I'm saying a lot of words where I typically should be writing. You know, if you read this in a math book, it'll be a complete sentence. So this is kind of like a, a notes version of what you see in a book. So whenever a function satisfies this property, we say it's a homogeneous function of degree n. Uh, some books use alpha instead of n. So it turns out that if m is homogeneous, and if n is homogeneous, and they're both homogeneous of the same degree, then we say the DE is homogeneous. So I'm gonna give this name, I'm gonna call it one. So we say, we say one is a homogeneous DE. So homogeneous DE. If both M and N are homogeneous of the same degree. So like if they're both homogeneous of degree two, if both M and N are homogeneous, homogeneous, it's a big word, of the same degree, of the same degree. And I'll just give you a really quick example just so you see what it means uh, for a D to be homogeneous. Let me just switch colors here. Uh, how about something like this? I'm just making all this up. So it's the x squared plus y squared dx plus xy dy equals zero. So this, this differential equation uh, would be a homogeneous differential equation. And that's because this function here is homogeneous of degree two. And this one is also homogeneous of degree two. Uh, if you add the exponents, uh, one plus one is two. You could check, let's just check really quick. So this is m, this is n. So we have m of x, y. I'll do this quickly. And this is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then so if we look at m of lambda x, and again, this is something that typically you would never do because uh, once you see it done once, you realize it's obvious. This is lambda x squared plus lambda y squared. Basically, if the exponents are the same, you're good. So this will be lambda squared, and you pull it out because you get lambda squared, lambda squared, x squared plus y squared, and that's gonna be lambda squared m of x, y. So we've proven that this function is homogeneous of degree two, did that kind of quickly, but I wanna to get to the real meat of this video, which is explaining why the process works. Here, if this is n of x, y, this would be uh, x, y, and then this one might not be so obvious. So again, we replace x with lambda x, and y with lambda y, and so this becomes parentheses lambda x, parentheses lambda y, okay, and then lambda times lambda is lambda squared, right, and then you get the x, y, but x, y is defined to be n of x, y, so it's really beautiful, really nice mathematics. So you see n is a homogeneous function of degree two, so they're both homogeneous functions of the same degree, because there's a two here, that's why it's degree two, and therefore the DE is homogeneous. Okay, so when the DE is homogeneous, which I'm gonna write it again, so we have m, of x, y, dx, pretend it's homogeneous, plus n of x, y, dy, 
equals zero. So when this differential equation is homogeneous, we can solve it, and there's two ways to solve it, okay? You can either let x equals vy, or you can let y equals ux. Now, which one you use in an actual problem is actually pretty easy to figure out. So basically, if n is simpler than m, you wanna use this one. If m is simpler, then use this one. So for example, in our previous fake example, you notice that here you have x squared plus y squared, that's two terms. Here you have xy, that's one term. So you would, you would use this one, you would, you would use y equals ux, okay? And then you would compute the derivative using the product rule, which, you know, dy, uh, using the product rule would be u dx plus x du. So you would make a substitution, you would make this full substitution, okay, into your de, and it would become separable. And so in this video, I'm going to explain why it becomes separable, because all of this is taught uh, in a regular differential equations class that you take, um, at least like in the U.S., in most colleges, they, they teach you this, it's one of the sections but they always omit uh, the reason why it works, and that's what this video is about. It's the why, which is really a little bit harder to understand. Okay, so now we're gonna do some, some clever maneuvering here. So now I'm gonna slow down. So we're gonna solve this for dy dx. So I can take this and subtract it over. So we get n of xy dy, and that's equal to negative m of xy um, dx. Okay. And then now uh, I'm going to divide by dx and divide by n. So when you do that, you get dy dx. Okay. And that's equal to negative m of xy over n of xy. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to write this in a new way. I'm going to define homogeneous another way because when you um, define it that way, that I'm going to show you, it makes it easier to explain why it turns separable, right? Okay, so let's assume here that this is a homogeneous DE. So we know that means that M and N are homogeneous of the same degree, right? We know that. So that means that um, this uh, is the same thing. So in other words, this would be, if you have this, okay, you have this, so if you replace x with lambda x and y with lambda y, if they're both homogeneous of the same degree, okay, what happens, what happens is you get, let's just say it's degree n, just to be general. This would be lambda to the n, m of x, y, right? Because m is homogeneous of degree n. And on the bottom, uh, n has to also be homogeneous of degree n. So this is lambda to the n, n of x, y, okay? And so what happens, they cancel, right? they, they cancel. So what I was saying earlier is that this is the same as this, right? These are actually the same. So this is the same as negative, right? Because this is this, negative m of lambda x, lambda y, over n of lambda x, lambda y, okay? So these are actually the same, okay, which is really interesting. So now what we can do is take it a step further, right? Lambda is just some constant, right? So let's, let's force it to be something pretty. So if you put lambda equal to one over x, we end up with dy dx equals, so what's gonna happen here, right? If you put lambda equal to one over x, um, you're gonna get lambda times one over x. Right, so that's gonna be one. So you're gonna get negative m of one comma, and then lambda is one over x, right? So it'll be, um, I think I, that, I wrote that pretty bad there. So it's, yeah, one over x times x. Look, lambda is one over x. So this is one over x times x, that's one. So that becomes one, becomes a one. Um, and then here, lambda times y would be one over x times y. So that's y over x. So this becomes y over x. Same thing here with the n, right? Lambda is one over x, one over x times x is one. And then lambda y, one over x times y is y over x. So we can write this now in an even better way. We can say that dy dx 
is equal to uh, r of y over x. I'm going to put this in a box, okay? Where where r of y over x is equal to this, okay? Is equal to uh, negative m one comma y over x, and it seems really convoluted, but this will allow you to see. Uh, in a much easier way, hopefully, uh, although it's a little bit confusing, um, why it turns separable. Okay, let's let's talk about why. So now let's let's show that this is actually a separable differential equation. So we can take this as our new definition of a homogeneous DE. So if you have a differential equation and you can write it like this, it is homogeneous. So now you have an alternate way of solving problems, right? Too. So if you see something that fits this form, um, you're good. As as an example, if you had uh, I'll do it up here in red. If you had, um, let's just see, like dy dx equals e to the y over x, right? This would be, I guess it fits this form, right? So it'd be homogeneous uh, and you'd be good, right? Because it's a function of y over x. So it's a different way to uh, you know, define homogeneous. Now, it's not necessarily good to put it in this form to solve it. Um, usually it's not a good idea. So, okay, so now we're going to make our substitution. We talked about how y was equal to u over x. Well, that means that that means that u is equal to y over x. So we really have dy dx equals r of u. Right? Equals r of u. That's really what we have. And so now we're going to show we have to show that this is separable. That's the goal. Okay, we have to show it's separable. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it star. Okay. So if we do that substitution, we can compute um, we can compute dy dx. So dy dx using the product rule, uh, it's going to be the derivative of the first. So du dx times the second plus the first, which is u times the derivative of x with respect to x, which is one. So then this becomes replacing this with this, you would get x du dx okay uh, plus u equals r of u okay and this should be separable so let's try to separate it you would subtract u from both sides so x du dx equals r of u minus u okay and so now i'm going to pause here for a second i'm going to multiply by dx and then i'm going to show you something so this is x du equals r of u minus u dx. Okay, so the goal is to show that this is a separable differential equation, this right here, which we have in a box. So we made a substitution, right? This is our new definition of homogeneous. We've made a substitution. We've done some mathematics. We're at this point, and again, the goal is to show that this is actually a bona fide separable differential equation. All right, so I want to divide by r of u minus u, but I'm concerned because I don't want to divide by zero. So watch this. I'm going to come over here. So if, if we were dividing by zero, in other words, if r of u is actually identically equal to u, okay, so if it's u, then star becomes, what does it become, right? Let's look at what star becomes. It becomes dy dx equals r of u, right? Because this is your u, right? y over x is u. So it becomes dy dx equals r of u, which is u. So dy dx, what's u? u is actually just y over x. And this is separable, right? This is easy. We can easily solve this, okay? So if r of u is u, then we're done. We just go back to star, replace r of u, replace r of y over x with r of u, but r of u is u, so this is just u. But u is y over x, so dy dx is y over x. Piece of cake, it's separable, nothing happens. So if it's not, so otherwise, so continuing the logic chain here, otherwise, r of u is not u. So we could divide by r of u minus u, because we're not dividing by zero anymore. And you can also divide by x. So you would get du over r of u minus u equals dx over x. 
And this is super easy, right? This is separable, right? You've separated it. Now you can just integrate both sides and, and go from there. Whether or not you can com compute this integral, that's another story, right? Um, <laughs> but in theory, you could solve it. It's separable, so no issue. So in any case, we've shown that when you have a homogeneous differential equation, right? When you have a homogeneous differential equation, we talked about what homogeneous means, okay? That we can... Uh, write it in this way and redefine homogeneous DEs as a DE having this form, and then we showed that it's separable. So just a quick re recap, if you're actually if you're actually watching this video, which uh, would be great, that's a lot of uh, strange knowledge that most people don't know because uh, it's not really taught. So we have a differential equation. We're saying that a function is homogeneous if it satisfies this property here. Okay, that's what it means for a function to be homogeneous. And if both M and N are homogeneous of the same degree, we're saying that um, the differential equation itself is homogeneous, okay? So uh, here's an example. Basically, you can just look at the powers, two, two. You can add these, one plus one is two. If they're both the same, we say it's a homogeneous DE. So we took our homogeneous DE, which is right here in white, and we solved it for dy dx. And then um, we noticed that because they're both homogeneous of the same degree, uh, this is equal to this, right, what the lambdas. And so we put lambda equals 1 over x, and basically we got rid of the x variable and wrote it as a function of y over x. So we we called this r of y over x, and so now we have a new definition of homogeneous. We're saying, hey, if a differential equation fits this form, then we're going to say it's a homogeneous DE. Then we made our substitution. This is the one that's taught in schools. And we tried to show that it's separable. Again, the goal is to show that whenever you have a homogeneous DE, it's actually separable. So we went through this process here, and we got here. And when I got here, I really wanted to divide. Let me use a different color. I really wanted to divide by R of U minus U and divide by X to show it's separable like we do here. But we have to be careful, right, because we don't want to divide by zero. So if we are dividing by zero, in other words, if it is U, Go back to star, right? Go back to star. Y over X is your U. So this is R of U, but we're saying it's U. So this whole thing is U, but U is Y over X. So this whole thing is Y over X. That's a piece of cake. That's separable. Um, very, very easy to you know separate this. Not an issue at all. And we're done. So it's separable. Otherwise, it's not U. So you can divide by R of U minus U. So you're not dividing by zero. And again, very easy. It's separable. So in any case, the DE is separable. So we've shown that the method taught uh, in schools works. Kind of a, a long ranted video, but I just wanted to make a video and put it out there just to show you why it works. Hopefully uh, this has helped someone in the world, even just one person. <laughs> Good luck.